Well, so this evening we are going to look at task three of the internal controls exam. Now, I prepped this one and 30 seconds later I thought, well, that's not going to take very long. Um, so I prepped another one, one you don't have. So one you do have, one you won't. Well, if you're a first intuition student, you will, because this is taken from mock two. I didn't reinvent the wheel, but I will get it sent out with recording anyway. Um, so this is task three. It is automatically marked. There's no human mark in it, like task three of PDSY. And remember, in AAT, there is no negative marking. So if you're not sure or you use a press of elimination, put something down because empty boxes are definitely going to get you no marks. Well, hopefully you, you would know. So the first task we're going to look at is between application controls and general controls. So before we start, we'll define what these are. So application controls are controls specifically within that one application. And when we talk applications, it's programs on your computer. So, for example, I have, I haven't got it here, on, we do our expenses through zero. And there is a specific control, multi-factor authentication, that before I can log my expenses, it has to flash up on my phone saying, is it you logging into zero? And I have to click yes. So that is a specific control for the application. Whereas I also have a password on my computer to log on. That's not specific to any application. It's um, you know just a general control for everything. So that's just between an application control and a general control. Cool. So you've got a 50-50 chance on these, so don't believe in the blank. But hopefully you'll know the answers to these. So the first one, the mandatory input fields for websites, i.e. you've got to put a postcode in. Is that an application control or a general control? Anyone for anything else? Like, say, you've got 50-50 chance. Um, yeah, so it's a specific control to filling in, in fact, it's so specific, it is filling in that box on the web page that you have to have a postcode. So that is specific to the application, which is, that, I don't know, perhaps it's an online booking form system or something. So it's specific to, if your pen actually works, um, oh, I don't want that, anyway, uh, to that application. Next one, numerical sequence checks. So what that is, is for example, on Sage, every single invoice should have a um, a number that is sequential. So if you've got invoice two, invoice three, invoice five, you think, where's invoice four? Something's go wrong. Do we think that's application or general? Yeah, it is application because it is specific to that program, whatever it is. So it's numerical sequence checks on whatever that program is. It's not something that is a check over multiple programs, like a general thing. It's specific to that one thing. Next one, range limit checks, whether a customer has exceeded their credit limit. Do you think that's specific to one application or a general control? So in terms of general, how how could a check on whether Christmas cleared the credit limit span several programs? Because presumably, I don't know, we're not going to use Sage as an example because not everyone uses Sage, um, but it would be, you would record it on zero, say, they would have a credit, credit limit on zero, and that presumably would be where you check. So it'd be specific to that application you wouldn't have one control that can do credit limit checks on an Excel file as well as a zero data set or anything like that. It would be specific to that one thing. Next one, antivirus protection. Do you think that's specific to an application or is it a general control? Yeah, Have we all got that one. It, it is general. So it does multiple programs, multiple systems on one thing. Um, I presume you could even antivirus on a server which does multiple computers. So that would be a general control. Next one, um, edit checks of input data. For example, checking whether customer code is input in the correct format. What do you think, application or general?
Yeah, it's got to be application because, you know, again, you're looking for that one piece of data being entered into that one field correctly. It's very, very specific. So it's specific to that application. Whereas operating logs, for example, who was logged on that computer at that point in time? What do we think that is? Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, it's general. So you know who's been on that uh, computer at that point in time. And that will hopefully give you an idea of like who was in zero using that computer, who was logging into SharePoint, who was doing something else at the point in time. So it goes across multiple applications. Uh, for a computer or a software, like an audit trail, well, I suppose you could have a who logged in to zero uh, report in that, which would be an application thing. But generally, it would need to, in an exam, it would need to say operating logs for so-and-so. If it's something quite generic like this, like operating logs of whatever, I would definitely go down the general loop. But if it was like login dates and times for a program, it's got to be application. Um, yeah, I agree with you, sir. If it said software, operating logs for, I don't know, say you use SAPs, you've got a big program. Um, and you know, who's logged in to that one program at the point in time, I would definitely say application. If it's gen general or it doesn't say, I would definitely go down the um, general route. Uh, next one, general, regular backups. Now, again, if it, if it doesn't say, I would like you all did go down the general route. So, you know, that's like backing up your things that put on the server and things like that, quite general. Whereas if it said, I don't know, something automatically backs up, a program automatically backs up every five minutes to the cloud, application but unless it actually specifically says that and you've got to assume it's, it's quite generic and quite general and then the last one maintenance of hardware mm. again totally general you know it's nothing specific to anything else and that's eight marks that's some pretty good eight marks um the way I would say it's easiest to figure it out is unless it is referring to a specific thing, if it's if it's quite specific, I would go down without without seeing every single possible combination. If it's quite specific, like here, you're checking that a certain field is correct. Likewise, here it is correct. Um, you know, here it is a specific thing on something else, whereas this is quite generic but that's a rule of thumb i wouldn't say that will get you everything right every single time there will be things that i don't envision that's in the exam that i've not seen that perhaps don't follow that rule but if, it, if it's quite specific about it i'd if i had to choose i'd go application if it's quite general like anti-virus protection it's not related to anything specifically i would go down the general route Last little thing for our last two marks, we've got two boxes to fill. We've got five options. We haven't got quite a 50-50 chance here, but hopefully we should know. So we want to monitor controls within the business, making sure they're working properly. In a large organization, who is going to be responsible for that? Now we've got a few choices here. Now, I, I know you've all put managers, but I would argue not in a large organization. Because in a large organization, ultimately, the responsibility for everything in a legal point of determination is the directors. Their directors have the ultimate responsibility. But the person who, in that sort of team, the person who it literally is their job would be the internal auditors because 
managers, I know it sounds, oh, managers, a great thing. Managers can actually, they're not, can potentially not be that high. You could have client manager, you know, you could have systems manager, um, you know, in a firm, I know the word manager, you think oh, they're in charge, but actually you would have directors, associate directors. And if it's like a firm of accountants, you can actually have um, you know, partners, uh, senior partners, you know, chief execs. So managers isn't actually the ultimate responsibility in a large firm. Whereas, as Natty says, if I can actually finish it off, in a smaller firm, you know, perhaps it's not a limited company, even at the top, you just have a manager. But generally, small firms don't have internal auditors. Internal auditors is a person whose literally job it is to look at the internal controls, make sure they're working correctly. So when the external auditors come in, they can add a lot of reliance on that. Internal auditors do nothing other than make sure that the systems and controls work properly. That's what the job is. And they're obviously told to do it by the directors, um, but that is their job. Whereas a lot smaller firms won't have an internal audit function. I used to be an auditor. I've never come across a firm that had internal auditors because you're talking big, big firms. But again, this comes back to our internal control sort of thing is knowing it's not shareholders. They don't get involved with the day-to-day -day, uh, running of the business. It's not employees because you know, they don't get paid enough to do that. And then external auditors, they, they don't, they're not responsible to making sure that they work correctly. They, their role is to assess if they are or not. And if they're not, to just say they're not working correctly. And the audit's you know, a qualified audit. It's not their job to make sure that they are. They just check. But that is 10 marks. That's the entire task. What do we think to that? Is that shocking in a good way? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, we don't know the exact format um, of how what's going to be laid out in the exam. All we get told is what's coming up in the exam so in terms of content, and we know it's automatically marked, and we have two sample assessments to go on. But generally, they're a very good indicator of what you're going to get. You're not going to get any written stuff. Um, the content itself doesn't lend itself to numbers. It's going to be multiple multiple choice, drag and drop, link the boxes. You know, it's true or false kind of thing. So that's that. Um, that's literally taken eight minutes with sort of waffling in. So I, I didn't want to just short change it this evening. So I have prepared another one uh, because... So it's, it's a little bit straightforward. So this one here is from our mock two, if you're a first intuition student, but either way, I will get it sent out. You won't have this, but you don't need to really see it. It's a yes, no kind of thing. Cool. So what we're doing here is to look to see if the internal controls are a fit for purpose. Now, this one is a little bit more tasking because we've got the internal control but we've also got the purpose. And in this question here, we need to be actually saying, does that control fit the purpose? Yeah, I mean, they don't, when there's multiple choice and you've got a choice of four and you know they won't just give you three horrendously wrong ones, one that's obviously right. Um, you know, they are, it is a level four exam and it is tested. But with something like this, it's either suitable or it's not suitable. It's one or the other. You've got a 50-50 chance. Um, but when you've got, you know, one of five, you know, some of them will be close and written quite cleverly. It won't be complete giveaway. But don't worry about that. But anyway, back to this. In purpose of this, we need to look at does the control achieve the purpose that we're aiming for? Whilst it might be a good control, does it achieve the purpose that we want? So the first control is holiday requests are only authorized by the department managers 
after checking that the department will be sufficiently staffed to cover their workload. The purpose of this is to facilitate operations, i.e. make it all work well. So there's no disruption to operations. Do you think this will achieve that purpose or not? Is it suitable or not suitable for this purpose? Yeah, I would agree with Matthew that we're making sure you've got enough people to cover and we're trying to make sure that operations work smoothly. So in that case then, yeah, I would say that's suitable. The next one, before we look at the control, let's look at what we're trying to do. Safeguard assets. Would managers reviewing monthly management accounts and investigate unexpected variants safeguard our assets? Do you think that's a suitable control to achieve that or not? Anyone? Yeah, I mean, it's a good control, don't get me wrong, and probably should be doing that, but I don't see how that relates to safeguarding assets. You know, if you're looking at variances, I don't see that stops, you know, theft or de uh, degradation or assets being broken. So I wouldn't say that's suitable for the purpose that we're trying to achieve. Next one, we want to prevent and detect fraud. So would password protecting it and only allowing authorised members of staff to access it, achieve this goal. I think it's suitable or not. Now, for those who clicked not, I'd be intrigued to know why, because that sort of gives away why I think. Um, now, it will never, you can, you can never prevent and detect all fraud, like Paul says. You can never you can never do that but does it go towards preventing and detecting fraud yeah so it will it well it hopefully will reduce fraud um and prevent it but like I say it like you say you can never assume there's never going to be any fraud um yeah a better control would be second authorization um things like that but it's better than nothing and it does go some way towards achieving our purpose yeah i mean i do see the point about detect i do see the point about detect but it would definitely go towards prevent and when it comes to detecting it well you'd be able to more likely detect who did it, if nothing else. But next one, get my pen. So here we want to ensure quality of reporting. So items are ordered, or inventory are ordered when a certain reorder level is reached to ensure there's not a shortage, so we don't get stockouts. Does that ensure quality of reporting or not? Is it suitable for that? Now, it's it's a good control, and I think you definitely should be doing that, but it doesn't achieve our purpose. And lastly, compliance. Are we complying with the rules and the law of limited companies if we perform a monthly re bank reconciliation? Yeah, just no. It doesn't. Now, these are a little bit more tricky. I'll do give you that. But again, remember at this level four, 70%, I'd like to think you'd get, with the odd error, you'd still get four out of five, which is 80%, which is still good going. And we're not quite done there. There's a bit more in this one. Um, so now we're looking at controls and we're looking at attitudes. I don't want to do that. Um, awareness and actions and management. And whether this would promote a strong work environment or not so the first one only allowed to accept gifts less than 20 pound and they must be disclosed to the manager does that promote a strong control environment or not yes or no yeah i totally agree um 
obviously a gift of under 20 pound is not going to strongly sway you to do something illegal and then the fact you reporting that you've got a gift to your manager again makes you think that they are aware you're getting these gifts and then perhaps might be looking at you a bit more closely so i do agree that would totally give you a stronger control environment next one when a new employee joins the organization the line manager explains all the company's policies and verbally so they can discuss any queries arising do you think that promotes strong control environment or not I totally agree with you, Sarah. I wouldn't be able to remember people's names, never mind um, policies and procedures and things like that. It's, it should be, like you know, we actually do that here. You've got to, you get a week to read it. It's not the most fun you'll ever have, but you've got to sign a thing or tick the box online to say you are ready. So I don't think it's going to, it's just going to be bewildering and go in one ear out the other. Next one, external audit firm performs an annual review of the internal controls and reports its findings to the directors which is typically the sort of thing you would do in a statutory audit is that a strong control environment or not or well, promoting one if the controls have been reviewed but again yeah i mean it does and that's why we do it as part of the statutory audit so you go you test the controls and everything and then you uh, write a letter to management after each report suggesting ways to improve it <laughs> lastly uh, you want shooting if you want this one wrong. The three divisional directors are not required to follow the company's policies because they're quite senior. Does that <laughs> strong control or not? No, no, no. Um, very animal farm. I like that analogy. All I do quite a lot. Cool. So that's that. Uh, again, something a little bit tricky, but again, it's not a written task. It's got to tick the right one. Last one internal controls should be the same in all organizations, regardless of the size or nature, or should be tailored. Yeah, because companies do different things. Companies work in different areas. So one company that deals in, for example, I used to know someone who was a bookkeeper for a load of amusement arcades on Grimsby Seafront, and there was hundreds of thousands of pounds of cash flying around. And I'll just be honest, the directors are here were, were great. I wouldn't have touched that with a badge pole. They obviously require very different controls to, for example, a client I had who was an actuarial. And an actuarial, they're dead clever, look really good at maths. And basically, they are consultants to insurance companies. And what they'll do is say to an insurance company, the odds of a typhoon in, I don't know, Scarborough are one in X hundred thousand. It's not going to happen very much. But if there was, this is what it would cost you to pay it out. Therefore, this is what you should set your premiums at to ensure you can afford to cover a typhoon if it ever rose. But whatever. Anyway, so it's, it's incredibly well paid. So people were on £30,000 a month, but they got one invoice paid by backs directly in the bank account from Norwich Union. Obviously, they would require very different controls to the £100,000 worth of cash flying around in amusement arcades in Grimsby. So it needs to be suitable and it also needs to be efficient. So you could have loads and loads of controls, but if you don't need them, you don't want them. They've got to be fit for purpose. Cool. And that is another task three, and it's still not even half past seven. So when you come to sit this exam, you should be looking to do really, really well on this task three. Cool. Anyone got any questions on anything we've done tonight or or anything uh, before we all get on? Next week, we will be looking at task four, which off the top of my head, I don't know because it's a relatively new unit, uh, is... Those up. Is a written one, which looks a bit similar to the task three. Uh, in that, um, I think there's ta five tasks in internal controls. Whereas it was six before, and then the fifth is the written one. Yeah, that's just five tasks. Now there are um, 
from my point of view, it's a bit fiddlier for marketing it because you've got, you don't have great big written questions where it's like 20 marks, what did they get? You put in mark. It's lots of little written questions. So it's like out of three marks, how many did they get? I have to put two. And how out of four marks, how many did they get? It's, it's fiddly. But you don't get huge, um, massive one off written questions to a degree. You won't get like a task two or task six. It's lots of little things. But yeah, there's only five tasks as well. And it's not a synoptic. And you don't have synoptic weeds. It is, you know, the stuff a teacher's dream of. Cool. Anyone for anything else before I let you all go? Uh, like I say, I'll be, I'm sure it's me. Uh, off the top of my head? I don't know. I can tell you. I've got half an hour. So, task three is only worth 10 marks. Um, Go up here. So task one is worth. Uh, it'll tell us. It'll go, this one will tell us. Yeah, I think task one is the big one. So you want to. Five, seven, eight, ten, fifteen, nineteen. What's that? Twenty-five. Task one. Sixteen. Twenty-four. In that ten, we know in uh, twenty-seven. In that, we know it's ten in task three. So we've just done that one. And task four is ten. 15 and task five, last one is 10, 16, 18, 25. That's like that. Yeah, um, I'm, I've marked one of these so far. It's not like I've been marking, budgeted in mocks the last seven years. Has it been that long? Um, good question about examiner's reports. Um, examiner's reports will not be out for internal controls until at least March or next year. You won't get any benefit to them. They they won't release pass rates, even in temporary ones, till five hundred students have sat the exam. Um, so it's going to be a while. And what they normally do, the next results probably come out in December. Or sorry, add to the period to December, which won't come out till March. So it's going to be a long time till we see national pass rates. Obviously, we'll see our pass rates, but even then, it's going to be six weeks down the line because. We've only had a couple of students sit and we've got to wait six weeks for results to come through. So uh, chief examiner spots will be a long way off, unfortunately. But um, it'll be interesting to see the new pass rates on the new qualification because applied management accounting, I'd be interested how that goes with budgeting decision control and some extra stuff stuck together. And then this compared to professional synoptic. But it, it just look so much easier and the student who sat it who did both said it's so much easier and it's not synoptic in itself um uh, so if you've if you now this is something actually you all need to watch out for aat have these automated systems that if your membership renewal is coming up they'll just email you saying time to renew your membership and we've had a few students who've renewed their membership who were planning to move over to Calls 22. So they just spent £105 to be on Calls, oh, sorry, on AQs 2016 for the next 12 months when they had every intention of moving over on a Calls 22 next month. So if you if you have renewed your membership in the last 30 days and you don't need to because you're going to move on to Calls 22, get on the phone to AAT and they'll give you your money back. Um, so if you have, so as of now, you can, um, move over to calls 22. Um, if you've only got PDSY to sit, I'd move over, pay £100 and sit this. God, it'd be so much easier. Yeah, just watch out because I've had a lot of people where they're just going, you need to pay your fees to so pay it, thinking that's fine, and then obviously find out, well, it'll be on AQ 2016 for the next 12 months because they're moving over next week. Cool. 
Anyone for anything else? Last minute, like I said, I'll get that last question sent out with the recording. Um, and then um, we'll do task four next week. Should be a bit more interesting, a bit more interaction. Cool. Right. Um, I don't think anyone is sitting in an exam next week. So hopefully I'll see you all this time next week. All right. Good night, everyone.